Right, it is uh, 3 p.m. and uh, in this hour we take you to a live briefing here on SA Today. The Department of uh, Education is holding a media briefing on plans uh, for schools in 2021. This says learners are expected to return to school tomorrow on Monday. Let's listen in on that. Uh, good, good afternoon, uh, colleagues. Good afternoon, Minister DM and DG, as well as colleagues. Um, my name is Elijah Mtlanga from the Department of Basic Education. Thanks for coming to the briefing. We'll get straight to the point. There's a lot to get through this afternoon. Uh, so I'm going to ask the minister to please come address us. But before she does, I hope please come sanitize so that we stay adhering to the protocols. Thank you. No, thank you very much, Hope, and thank you, Chair. Let me acknowledge my colleagues, my colleague, Dr. Jenya Mohaule, DG, officials from the department and members of the media, and again, thank you very much for attending this media briefing. As you'll be aware that it's almost three weeks since we started phasing in the reopening of the schools for the year 2021. Our management teams returned on the 25th of, of January. Our teachers have been at work for two weeks uh, since the 1st of February and doing all sorts of necessary preparations to receive our learners tomorrow. We've also amended our school calendar for 2021 as published by the department, confirming that tomorrow, the 15th of February, will be the first day for public schooling in 2021. And from the outset, we want to emphasize that the health and safety of our teachers, of our learners, and our staff remains our top priority. So we've issued consolidated directives, which we gazetted on the 12th of February this year. So in those consolidated directions, we do emphasize the critical importance of vigilance and strict adherence to the health and safety protocols in order to save lives. And these directions have also been distributed to schools for implementation. So the 2021 school readiness monitoring through one-on-one -on -one meetings, we've been doing one-on-one -on -one meetings with our provincial departments. We've worked with our teacher unions. They have released their national school readiness survey volume two of 2021 which was released jointly by SATU, NAPTOSA, South Africans on the Revesa, INI, NATU, and BEO. They released their report on the 9th of February. And it has also focused on provincial and school readiness in the provinces. And we are using the, the survey also to plug on identified gaps from our own surveys. But we remain committed in meeting and consulting with our stakeholders your civil society, your professional bodies, but also different NGOs in the area of education. Our monitoring tool has been focusing on health and safety, on school admissions, on learner dropout, provision of teachers, provision of LTSM, curricular management and assessment, the rollout of ICTs, communication and technologies, and our work on the, on, on, on the school nutrition program, on infrastructure delivery with special focus on water sanitation, but there's now a new focus on schools that have been storm damaged during uh, the rainy season and also uh, inaccessible roads that we've also had reports on, on learner transport and safety. So, Chair or Elijah will request the DG to give more details on the topics that I've raised so that I don't take too long. We also want to announce that as a sector, we were very privileged to be allocated almost 290,000 young people who have been employed on contract as education assistants and general school assistants. And these young people have been employed in our schools in the sector to respond to the president's fiscal stimulus package, which he announced in April 2020. And as education, we call this initiative the Basic Education Employment Initiative. 
and it seeks to address COVID-19 related academic disruptions as well as providing assistance in dealing with lingering systematic challenges. And another key component of this BEEI is to provide support to workers negatively and directly impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. We will also go public because I don't think we'll be able to give you more details about the work areas on this subject. But the portion of the seven billion allo allocated to this program is, tar is targeting also at saving SGB funded posts in public schools and government subsidized independent schools. I think we've, we've been allocated more than two billion to assist your government subsidized schools and also the GB, SGB funded posts to make sure that schools that are not receiving the usual allocation because of parents who are unable to pay fees, uh, teachers that don't lose their work. We are working hard to ensure that the delayed payments of some of these young people are addressed immediately. And the impact of coronavirus continues to be felt in the basic education sector. Again, we will be posting the full report, Elijah, because I'm not sure if we'll be able to go through all the details. So we'll, po we'll be posting on our website to illustrate what are the impacts of this virus on our work, which is quite saddening in some instances. But the latest available figures indicate that 1,169 educators have passed away as a result of COVID-19. This year alone, up to Friday, the 12th of February, the number of deceased educators stands at 159. Just between, uh, as I say, December, is it December and now? In January, we've lost almost 159 educators. And while non-teaching staff that passed also during this period, it's 69. And this is really heartbreaking as we conv convey our sincere condolences to the affected families. The other point that we'll be quickly referring to in the DG's presentations about school admissions, uh, I didn't tell you, DG, for some reason, my phone number was on the parliamentary website. And it was uh, not even a switchboard, but uh, a call center. Right through, some will even phone as five to seven to say, let's get her before she even starts the day. So it is an area which shows that parents are very desperate in some instances. And again, we'll give the figures. We've requested our provinces also to hold their press briefings to update parents about backlogs on school admissions because, as I said, those calls showed me that parents are getting restless and desperate when they don't have confirmation for admissions. So we know that provinces have made good progress, but there are still more than 16,117 learners that are still awaiting spaces. And that's why, as I say, parents were even calling Googling, picking up any number, and making sure that they press that their kids be allocated to schools or their admissions be confirmed. The other area that we want to speak about is around that as a department, we have a, we have a, a draft revised school admission policy for public comment, and we'd li we'd like to invite the public to also send their submissions. It's the policy focuses on the right and obligation of parents, and which, have, which is very critical. Hence, we're imploring the public to submit its comments to the department by the 12th of March this year. The other issue also which has been bothering pa parents about the school fee. And one of the questions frequently asked is around the payment of school fees during COVID-19. I said COVID, I said right, didn't I? I almost said COVID, a COVID-19 pandemic. I have to be sure that I read it right. So it is important to clarify this matter, because there are two types of public schools in the country, the fee-paying schools and the no-fee-paying schools. And so fee-paying schools are allowed to charge school fees, as determined by the annual general meeting of the SGB. Therefore, the payment of school fees in such schools is mandatory. There are other phenomena, <coughs> instances where p parents, again, are unable because of the impact of the virus. 
And we are saying because this decision is taken by school governing bodies, they should make representations to the school uh, to make sure that the necessary procedures and protocols are, 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 are followed. Uh, yeah. So we will also briefly, that's why I don't want to take long, because we'd like to also briefly update you on the 2020 metric examinations, because if you recall, for the first time in history of the national senior examinations in our history, that we had administered a combined exam, but the major issue about the 2020 exams was, it was the question about the leaks. And we'd like to just update the public and yourselves about where we are on the matter. Advocate Luvuyo Bono, who's the chairperson of the National Examinations Irregular, Irregular, Irregularities Commit, Committee, and Hugh Amo, the chair of the National Investigation Task Team. I wish them to make a brief presentation uh, on how far we are, and then again the DG will lead, lead on that. On stakeholder engagement, as a department, we've been meeting our stakeholders on a regular basis to discuss a, a variety of matters affecting the sector. The regular meetings have been held with school governing bodies, with principals, association, teacher unions, as I said, NGOs, learners, civil society, and different organizations that are involved in education. And the deliberations and inputs received from these engagements have assisted us as the sector to navigate the complex circumstances brought on by COVID-19 pandemic. I think since I got ill from COVID, so I'm able to have learned a lesson and to, to respect it and pronounce it properly. Uh, <coughs> so <laughs> yeah, I had a severe attack, so they uh, it. So we will strengthen our partnerships with our social partners and other partners in the department. And in conclusion, Chair, I want to thank our social partners, the business community, which has also been very helpful, even under these difficult conditions, by supporting the sector and cooperating with us under very difficult conditions. So these COVID-19 circumstances require the entire nation to support its children and indeed cooperate and support the sector on a sustainable basis. So again, we want to say, let us continue to adhere to the health and safety protocols, wear masks appropriately, sanitize and wash your hands with water and soap, keep social distancing and avoid large gatherings. And I urge every one of us to play our part in keeping our community safe and healthy. So, Elijah, let me just step off quickly so that I can give a chance to these other two presentations. But thank you very much.